Hi, I'm Cheryl Brunette and today I'm going to show you what to do when you go to pull out a beloved old sweater and you find that the moths have been munching on it. First of all, if you've just discovered moth damage, you're probably upset. So make yourself a cup of tea and sit down and contemplate the moth mother who was looking for a good food source for her babies when they hatched out of the eggs. So she laid the eggs in your closet that had your varsity sweater, very close to the sweater, probably on it. So I would probably when I found something like this, clean out that entire area. Take out all the wool, vacuum that area, shake all the wool out, put it in the freezer. Examine everything that you can. Um, put it in the freezer for at least 48 hours. That will be helpful to it. Also, if you have a small spray bottle, you can fill it with water and just a few drops of essential oil. You can use lavender oil, you can use um, cedar oil. I understand that rosemary and thyme also work and mint. And um, I would spray the baseboards or the shelves that you have things stacked on um, just to discourage that. Of course, there's always, you can put cedar chips in there, you can put um, lavender sachets, you can do a number of things. Uh, don't use mothballs. They are neurotoxins. That is, they will make you sick. They will make your nerves sick. Um, and once you get that done, it's time to assess the damage. And I went over, this one has six holes in it. Sometimes the moths don't really go all the way. It's actually the little larva. They can get like a half an inch long. Um, and they grow pretty fast because they're munching on your good wool or your alpaca or your dog hair or anything with keratin in it. They'll do, I think, leather even. Um, I'm not entirely sure on that, if that has keratin in it. So here's a little place, I, I think it's hard to see, but you can see there's not as much sheen there. It almost looks scuffed. And that's because just the top layer was taken off. Um, as I said, I had six holes that I found in here, and this is the one that I'm going to replicate for you. It is, let me stick my hand in there, let me find. Here it is. This is actually three complete rows that got cut. Um, notice that the knitting goes in this direction, and we're going to have to repair those three rows. Now, in order to repair it, I want to have a yarn that looks the same. And where are you going to find that yarn to repair it? Well, in this case, this is one of those very well-made sweaters. And there is, it's, it, in fact, it's really impressive how well-made this was and how well it's lasted. My friend to whom this belongs graduated from Hollywood High in 1953, and it's still in good shape. Um, it has this hem, so I can unravel a couple of rows right from in here and then tack them back together, and that would give me the perfect yarn. If you don't have anything like that and you didn't knit it and you don't have any of the yarn, here's another place, a great place to take yarn out of, and that's the pocket. You can shorten that, just shorten that up a little bit and take the yarn out of there. Um, although... It looks like, yes, look at that. This is in terms of quality. The pocket has um, probably fewer plies and it's more tightly knit. So I would take it out of the hem. Something else I did uh, before I knew I was going to do that is I went to the fabric store and took this sweater and tried to find floss. This has a certain sheen to it. Not all wools will have that. So you're not only matching the color, but you're also matching the texture the best way you can. Um, another thing that I have is I have this old yarn, which is about from the same era, by the way, and it's pretty close in color. It is a worsted weight so that it's um, heavier than I need, but I already started that one Here's this one hole that I started with a ply of that. 
just to see what it would look like. This is low in the back. I don't think I like it because it doesn't have that sheen and it also um, isn't quite the right color. Although, really, for the most part, I think he just cares that the holes get fixed and nothing else. Okay, as I prepared this program, I tried two different techniques. This is the one that I've used for years and years, and this is one that I had heard about um, from the book Flawless Knit Repair by Rena Crockett. I bought the book specifically so I could see the way she was doing it, because if you're going to teach something, then um, you should have the best method possible. Turns out I was happier with my own method. This is perfectly serviceable, hers, and I didn't complete all working in all the yarn ends on this side. You're going to have extra yarn ends, of course, because you're introducing new yarn when you're repairing something like this. Um, but basically, this is going to be, when we make the hole, you'll see that it's a split up this way. And she has you unravel all three of them until you have enough yarn that you can work it in later. And then working from the bottom, we uh, work the rows back there. She has you connect them. I didn't actually follow her technique entirely, but I, I just use regular duplicate stitch. And that's what I've always done. And then afterwards, I unravel. So I encourage you to learn or try multiple methods of things and choose the one that works best for you. This just happens to be the one probably that I've used it forever, so that's probably why it was so much easier for me. If you think this one looks better or um, whatever, go ahead and do it the way you want. But I'm gonna show you the way I've done it forever. So here we have a swatch that has already had a hole repaired in it and we're going to do another. Let me see if I've got it right side up or upside down. It really doesn't matter because it's stuck in it, right? Well, this is its right side up, but I think I'm gonna do it like this. Okay, when I looked really closely at the hole that I'm gonna replicate, first of all, it, was, it started by having the strand between two stitches was cut. Now there's this, a, row, a line of stitches, there's a row of stitches. It's not a row, it's actually like a column of stitches. Let me get my glasses out of the way here. Um, and on one row, this th connecting thread was cut and then that little guy just kind of migrated over. And on this row, it was a stitch that got eaten. And on this row, it was a stitch that got eaten. So I am exactly recreating that same hole for you. That's what it looks like. So on this repair, we only had one row that disappeared and we just had to uh, work it back together. And, and here's the video for that to show you that technique. That's when you get a snag and it breaks. Um, but in this case, we have multiple rows. So let's take a close look. This row is intact. See it? It's the row above that that starts to fall apart. And what I like to do is basically start a couple of stitches over, do duplicate stitch, back and forth over the entire hole. And then after that's done, I will unravel this yarn so that it doesn't get in the way. Um, and here's a, here's a little trick to, that I'm gonna show you that my mom taught me years ago. This is wool, of course, and I'm not going to cut it, I'm going to break it. And the reason is it gives me a nice tapered edge and obviously I'm going to be working in yarn ends here. So you, that tapered edge is far less likely to pop out than a blunt edge. See when you cut it, see how blunt, look at the difference of the, between those two. So that's just a little handy thing to know. I, there are some <laughs> yarns of course that I can't break. I can't break, um, acrylics and that sort of thing usually they're just too hard okay so let's find our hole there it is Ooh, scary scary 
get my tapestry needle, thread it up, and I'm going to start. I pick it up usually. I work. I don't um, work flat on this necessarily because I have to be coming in from the back side. And this is the row below, and this one is intact. And it's a choice whether or not you want to duplicate stitch that row. You can. If it will make you feel more secure, that's fine. But I'm going to start two stitches over from the one that was broken and insert in the row below. Now, let me come in a little bit closer. I worry that I lose the um, focus sometimes if I'm this close, but I think that you'll be able to see it better. Okay, so I came up in the bottom in the center of a stitch from the row below. And when I, I want to leave enough yarn on this side to be able to work it in. And I'm just going to duplicate that stitch. Now obviously you're, you would be using the same yarn, so it's, it's not going to be as visible if you're using the exact same yarn, which I could do, but I don't think it's easy enough for you to see. I, you, let me know if, if you would like to see this done and if you think that you could see it better if I did it in the actual same color yarn. Go around. Notice how I'm just following that stitch over and over again. I'm giving you opportunities to read your knitting and when you do that, it just opens up so much possibility for you. Okay, I'm coming up on the broken stitch. And I'm going to leave that thread there I'm, that I'm going to pull out later. But the broken stitch, see it coming down here? And there's the next stitch right there. Here's a stitch right here. I don't really have anything to hook that onto, right? So instead, I'm just going to make a little loop. I'm going to go back into that hole, but I'm going to let that loop. It's going to become a stitch when I come back and go into that loop. Now, a couple things here. I'm not worried about losing this. If it were a smaller stitch, I might be worried about losing that loop, having it pull out, but let me, I have a little, oh, <laughs> Let's grab a little stitch holder. Here's a little stitch holder. You can just stick that in there and that'll hold it um, until you get back to it. And then I'm coming to the next stitch and I'm in the center of that one. And I'm gonna go right up here and around that. Again, I've got a broken piece there, but that's okay. Oopsie. Tuck that underneath. Um, sometimes you can pull it better with a crochet hook. Notice I'm not very formulaic. Like I don't have a formula necessarily. When I, when I work on repairing knitting, I just look at what's in front of me. It's a problem-solving process. It is not a, this is how you do it. There's more than one way to do many things in knitting, which is one of the reasons it's so fascinating. And often when I'm on Ravelry and I, and I see someone say, well, this is the right name or the right way to do it, it it's often, <laughs> um, I mean, there are some things that of course can only be done one way like a left-leaning pearl decrease, for example. But, um, well, I only know one way. But the people who think that there's a right way to do stuff and it's the only way are often just not very experienced. They don't know that there are other ways. So, so be careful if someone tells you that they have the truth, that they know the truth, because they maybe don't. Okay, now here's that little loop that I had down below. I'm going to go into that. Let me take let me take this guy off of here. There's my loop. Oops, 
have to be careful that it doesn't cross, which is just what it wanted to do. Where's that? Here I am. Um, come up in the center of that loop, make sure that it's properly oriented. And mine is. And now there is a kind of semi um, part of a stitch up there that I can go into. And I'm going to go back down there. Now this is starting to get into the way. You can, you can stop any time along in here once you've covered it and unravel this if it's getting in your way. Okay. I think I'll leave that there. Go back into the loop that you came out of. Um, come up in the center of this next stitch. See where I'm going here. Right in that line. Um, I'm working backwards, of course. <laughs> I would probably turn this upside down ordinarily. Why don't I just do that, actually? Oh, well, because I want you to see this from this orientation. And of course, if you're left-handed, this shows you how you could go the opposite direction. I may have um, made this length of yarn a little bit short, I think. Um, and let's see. Where's my third row? For some reason, I mean, you saw me cut. Okay, let's look at this. Here's that row. There's a stitch that goes with it. There's that row and the stitch that goes with it. And here I am up on this third row. This must be the stitch that's cut. Is it? Oh my goodness. I don't know what happened to it. I know that I, I watched myself cut it. <laughs> Again, on the on the fly problem solving. Let's pull that out. There's one end. There's another end. Apparently I only cut two rows. I, th I thought that I had cut the third. Well, that's just as well. And I'll tell you why, because I don't have enough yarn here. So let me just <laughs> finish it up like this got myself off the hook there. But if I had cut the next row up, I would just reverse direction. I would just come up in the center of that stitch and work my way back. Now, that is that would not be particularly visible if um, this were all the same color, but that is one of those loose yarn ends. So let's pull it back. Let's pull it through. You can even pull it out a little. And um, cut yarn doesn't want to run quite as much as people, if, especially if it's wool. It just doesn't really like to run that much. I'm, I never seem to be that afraid of it. I've got a program coming up where I'm going to just cut it and pull on it and do all kinds of crazy things so that you can see how it really behaves. Of course, if it's ran or something like that, it'll just unravel like crazy. Okay. Now, these need to be tightened up a little bit so that you get the, the right gauge. Okay, I'm pulling on the wrong end. So that you match the stitches around it. But basically, there you have it. That's a filled in hole. If you have any ends that are sticking out here, make sure that you get them on the other side. And um, I just find this less cumbersome than unraveling it, but that, that is just my preference. Again, you're going to work in yarn ends. I, I do have one trick to show you. When the yarn end is nice and long, it's easy to work in, right? Because you can maneuver the needle. But when the yarn end is very short, it is harder to work in. So you insert, you can't obviously thread up that needle. So you put 
that in first. Put the needle in first and then get that yarn end into it. You can get pretty short lengths. It's a little bit fiddly to do this, a little bit tedious, but it works. There you go. I, I tried to get it to go further. Another thing you could use is a crochet hook for these really short ends. Um, I wonder what would happen if I pulled it this way. What would I get? There we go. It's not likely to pop through. I'm leaving. Notice that I'm leaving these little ends because they're not as likely to pop through to the other side if you've got a little bit of a tail there. Not this much. I would work that one in and I would pull that in that direction. Pull that little guy right there. Again, you look from the right side and Let's see what you, here you want to go there, you are a duplicate stitch, so I'll pull you through there. And these ones I would finish off with the tapestry needle. And voila! Once again, the hole has been fixed. So if you're going to keep sweaters around that you love, for a long time, and their wool, even with your best of care, sometimes the moths do get them. So I hope after today, you'll feel confident in fixing any holes that you do find. Until I see you again, be brave and enjoy your knitting. Good old blankies that have been dragged all over. It is, never mind that one. <laughs>